gas and I took off off the road and got up there to that George Feldy curve, a famous curve everybody knows about. And I started around that curve and my kickstand hit. And right then I, I knew that I was in trouble. But uh, going about 50 mile an hour, wasn't much I could do. And uh, it happened so quick. I caught the guy wars there that holds that pole up right across my waist and my back, the bike hit me in the back. And uh, if you can imagine what it'd feel like to be cut in half, as soon as I hit, that's what, that's what I thought happened. Because I couldn't, it was just like I was cut in two from about my belt line. I took my hands and I, I felt down there to see if, if I was there because I didn't think there's nothing there. And uh, you've heard of seeing stars. Everything was black with white polka dots for a few seconds. And uh, when I came to myself, I realized that I had wrecked and, and that uh, I couldn't feel anything. And I laid there for a little while and, and uh, people started stopping by. And... Uh, that call, of course, they call the ambulance and everything. I was there probably for 45 minutes or an hour. And uh ambulance come and got me, and they took me to Brill Hospital. And uh, there they uh, they didn't do much to me. They, they didn't know what to do. But uh, they worked on me a little while, then they took me on to uh, UK. And uh, I was there at UK for 10 days, and that's where they determined that uh, my spinal cord was severed. That's what they told me. And being from uh, San Gap, I said, what's severed? You know, I didn't even know what that meant. And that is to separate in two pieces. And if anybody knows that what a spinal cord is, when it's separated, it don't go back together. Uh, doctors say that it grows the thickness of a hair in seven years. I was hoping it was a lot closer than a hair, you know, at that time. But all this time I felt, uh, I felt at ease. But still, that's what they, they said, my spine was severed. And uh, I was paralyzed from waist down. I said I'd never walk again. They called it T10, that was my injury point. T10 paraplegic is what they, they titled me. And... Uh, after uh, I was out at UK for 10 days, they transferred me to Cardinal Hill, which is a wonderful place, a lot of you know. And I'd uh, done a lot of exercise and therapy. Of course, they told me I'd never walk again. And uh, they called my dad into the there one day and <clears throat> told him to go home and get the house in order for a wheelchair. They'd make, build handicap ramps and widen doors and first one thing and another. Dad come talk to me about it. And I, I, I've thought about that. How, how hard would that be for a dad to go talk to his son? <laughs> but I told him, I said, Dad, just wait. There's a higher power. Yes. And God is more than enough. He is. I was uh, 30 days after my accident. I was, I was laying there, and the nurse was uh, working on me, <clears throat> doing some more therapy. And uh, she raised, she bent my knee up on my left hand, and my my leg. I moved my leg, and immediately she jumped up and went and called the doctor. And the doctor came in, and, and uh, he started working with my legs and I was, I was moving both my legs. I started moving them. And he said, uh, you know what? He said, uh, I don't believe in miracles. But he said, being in, in the position I'm in, he said, I see some occasionally. I never did fully understand that, but that's, that's, that's what he said. And uh, once again, God was more than enough at that time. And uh, I don't want to bore you with this story, but it's uh, changed my life. Later on that day, my my sister come in. If you all know Evelyn, my sister, probably the best 
the greatest prayer warrior that was ever here on this earth, in my opinion. But she done a lot of praying for me, and she was she was coming that day. And uh, I had a lot of, uh, I was in the hospital for three months. And a lot of you have been in the hospital, and some of, some of us like company, some of us don't like company, I've heard, but... I was there for three months, and one day out of three months, there wasn't nobody come to see me. And I just, I think about things like that, and of course I've got a big family. But anyway, that day I had uh, some people already there to see me, and we was talking about my legs, I was moving my legs, and everybody's so, so excited, and uh, my sister was coming, and when she came in, we had it made up, she sat down there on the foot of my bed, and when she did, I kicked her. You know, normally people don't like to be kicked, but she was so excited that day that uh, that I kicked her. And it was just a very exciting time, you know. I, I've been paralyzed for 30 days, and and uh, God had moved. God had touched my, my back, my spine. And uh, from that day, they, uh, they started different therapy on me, and I uh, started moving moving my legs and we started uh, exercising and building my muscles up. After you, after you don't move a muscle for so long, it, it goes away real quick. So I was real weak and, uh, and uh, I started, and started uh, doing therapy on there. And I was there for three months. I got to come home a couple times during that period. And I'll never forget that one day I came home, one Sunday, <clears throat> and a lot of people from this church I wasn't going to church here at that time. They came out to see me. The Christian Echoes with with some more people came out to my my home, and they they sang to me, and uh, that was a a wonderful a wonderful day. <clears throat> and I finally came home. I actually drove home with uh, the help of some handicap accessible equipment that it, that they put on my truck, and they trained me to do that. Another, uh, another a miracle that God's more than enough. Then after working a couple years as a dispatcher at the fire department election and then joining the Christian Echoes, that was a part of probably an inspiration when they come out there that day that, that uh, I needed to be with them because I was raised in church all my life and I love music and still with them today. But... Uh, God answered another prayer. After all I've, I've been through, he, he continues to, to answer prayer. <clears throat> he put me with Jeanette. Answered my prayer. I don't know about hers. <laughs> <laughs> but we was married November the 8th of 1986, almost 23 years ago, 22 years ago. And another, God is more than enough. <clears throat> when you're <clears throat> been through what I had been through, I'm so dry. Somebody <clears throat> get me some water. I'd like to have it. <clears throat> Pretty nervous, but I'm getting better. <laughs> but uh, when you're paralyzed, uh, you can't have children. Does everybody know that? Look back here. I've got two. God's more than enough again. <laughs> the first one was uh, now she's a teenager so I need another miracle yeah. if you all got teenagers <laughs> any information will be helpful <laughs> big gun okay thank you Jerry We had Olivia, and then uh, a few years later, Sydney came along. <clears throat> Jeanette was pregnant, most of you know. And uh, she got a call one day and said Sydney had Down syndrome. Tore us up pretty bad. But we prayed. You know what happened? Yeah. Look at him. 
God's more than enough.